<laughs> that guy has a nice hat. <laughs> okay, welcome oh, back on the Adobe Twitch channel. Oh, they can see us talking. Okay. Yeah. Hey, 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 what's oh, up, Mike? Hey. How are you? We're here. Good to see you again. <laughs> and Carlos, you, you were there the other time, but not on stream. Well, I was on you were the other backstage. Side of this. Last time we did it? Yeah. Yeah, backstage. Yeah, yeah. yeah, backstage. Really yeah. Like a manager. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, telling Travis you should do this. You should yeah. say yeah. that. Yeah. Not good enough. <laughs> So this time we said, okay, over. let's go live. Let's yeah, go live. let's bring yeah. Trev and Los let's live on stream. We're, we're pretty excited because um, today is Trev and Los, but tomorrow I'm not going to be here, and neither the yeah, other. Yeah, I know. And Los has some special guests that he's bringing on. Mm. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you need to give me the name? Just to pass the security? But yeah, it should be interesting. And also we have some special guests you will see tomorrow and Thursday okay, cool. from the Adobe XZ team. Okay, cool. Just joining and joining the conversation. That's exciting. So that's really cool. That's great. I'm ready, yeah. yeah. And and uh, so, yeah, so we'll be live with our friends for two hours mm. and uh, they will uh, introduce us to the world of uh, UX design, experience design, you know, <laughs> and uh, feel free, please, to ask questions to uh, Travis and Carlos in the chat, use the chat, and uh, I will be next to them just to make sure they don't think do anything have, wrong. I think they're bringing up those guys on the mics. Oh, no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Mm. All yeah. right. Not really. I have the feedback here. Oh, right, right. right. Okay, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> we should be good. All right. Okay, so, yeah, I'll let you talk. Maybe you want to explain what you will be, sh be showing well, today? Well, first, first we're going to play a pump-up game. We'll play a pump-up game. Uh, in Travel low style. Travel low style. So. so we do this every now and then in front, in, in before our podcast. We, we, we don't publish the, the pump-up games on the podcast a lot, but every time we do it, we want to get excited so we can have good energy for you. Right. So we're going to do a pump-up game uh, live. And uh, what are we going to be doing? It's a uh, Rochambeau loser gets slapped in the face. Loser. <laughs> Rochambeau? Rochambeau. What is it? Rochambeau? It's not in France. No. We did Rochambeau last time. Remember when... Rock, oh, paper, yeah. With the... Uh, we were pushing me. Rock, paper, scissors. Like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, yeah with the Lazarus on the... Yes. We ended with a dolphin or something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I remember that. So what we're gonna be doing it, is it works very well. Rock paper scissors and with punishments. Three rounds. Three rounds. You lose, you get slapped in the face. Is it best out of three, or is there gonna be definitely three? Just three rounds because. Just three rounds. It's, so it's somebody it's could more get, than enough. Somebody could get lit three yeah, times. Because last time <laughs> we did this, I <laughs> lost like nine times Six. in a row. Like <laughs> it's so good. I never slapped low so much in my life. Uh, so right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right. All right. Are you ready? All right. It's bro shampoo. Bro, um, bro, bro. You say bro shampoo. Bro shampoo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. One, yeah. two, three. Oh! oh! One oh. zero. Oh! <laughs> Okay, I don't, okay. Get, I don't know yeah. whether to open or close my eyes. It's like, it's like I a roller coaster. It's coming, it's coming. We got two more. Okay, we got okay. two more. I don't want to play this game. All right. You want to play? I don't oh, play. Mike was I don't play. You told me you were going to do rock every time, so I didn't pay for it. You lied. You lied. <laughs> All right. Sneaky boy. One, two, three. Oh! oh no! Uh oh. Give it to me. Oh. <laughs> Ow! Okay. All right, one last more. Time, then we're good. One more. This is user experience. This is user experience. This is, this is, you feel the experience? You have to experience. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, uh, the gamer dude says, the guy in the white is like, thank God I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to get you. All right, All right let me think. What are you going to be doing? Rock. <laughs> I, I kind of I kinda believe you. All right. Rock, Rock shampoo. shampoo. Oh! oh okay. <laughs> uh, all right, we're hyped. Here we go. Oh, I'm so pumped. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Now. I let you work because I feel that you are pretty. We're good. Pretty, we're good. <laughs> uh, by the way, guys, it's uh, 5 p.m. So when is it? Like in uh, what time is it? I don't it's even know. It's one o'clock. In four. It's okay, so four in four hours, hours mm. uh, the Adobe XD team will be with us to talk about what's new in Adobe XD because they just updated the app yesterday mm. and uh, what's coming. So it should be cool. But All right. I need to talk about this. Uh, experience design process, okay? Nice T name says everyone has to play. <laughs> no, 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 no. So okay, guys, I need to escape do, now. Yeah. Right, thanks. Thanks for, the, thanks for the intro. All right. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is we're talking about, I mean, because this is Adobe XD, or no, sorry, Adobe UX week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And every day that we're on this show at, at one o'clock, we're going to be talking about different uh, ways that we can use and understand and apply principles of UX. That's right. Today we're starting with the very fundamentals of UX and we're talking about how to achieve hierarchy through using design principles. Okay. So, hierarchy. Let's do it. What's that? <laughs> so, hi hierarchy is uh, how we organize information, right? Yeah. It's how we make sense of the world. 
it's uh, the mental models that we create for like walking in a subway, right? For mm -hmm. signage, for wayfinding. Gives you context where you're at. For UI, you what to do next? What to do? A door has UX, right? Mm -hmm. and so there's hierarchy on a door. And yeah, so, whether it's a push or a pull. That's right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So that's so, what I'm so a very very mm -hmm. clinical definition that we're going to be using for the rest of the day today mm -hmm. is we're going to say that hierarchy is the order of importance within an organization. And we can, we can look at that broadly, and we can say that hierarchical orders exist everywhere, and you just named a lot. We have them in, in social structures as well, for example, in the family, mm -hmm. uh, in the office. Like the head of the family, yeah. the, the manager. The managers, the VPs, the president, the CEO. That's right. Right? Uh, we have them in government, in different kind of like we have local, state, and if you're in different you know, uh, legislative systems and things like that. That's right. And also in like, in like other cultural things like religions, uh, they all have higher, the only icon I could think of for religion was a nap. Because <laughs> everyone sleeps. Because that's what we all, religious. all religions have that in common. <laughs> they all take naps. Uh, so hierarchy exists everywhere we go and also in naming systems, right? Mm. So right here we have a picture of Major Payne. Mm. He's a major in the military. You know, other naming systems, a colonel, private, uh, general. These are all naming systems. We also have hierarchy in our navigational system. So this is, we have a picture up here somewhere of uh, the finder. Mm -hmm. And this help, you know, we using folders, understand what projects you're in, what the files, what are the component pieces of the files. And also in, uh, you know, in text. So like a chapter heading of a, of a textbook is going to give you context of where you are and you know what's going to happen next. It prepares you, gives you that, the lay of the land. That's right. So hierarchy is so important in, in every aspect of our lives. And uh, it's also uh, portrayed visually. And we as designers, this is what we do to be able to give understanding of information to other people. We use a lot of tools to give visual cues of hierarchy. And today we're going to be talking about these visual cues in the context of design principles. Right. Well, there's a way to use these and that's what we're going to go through um, because there are ways to use these incorrectly and thus not give proper hierarchy and thus not help the person consuming the hierarchy to have a accurate mental model. Right, right, absolutely. So so today is the day one of our three-day stream, and we're gonna be talking about like what are the component pieces of building a hierarchy. That's right, and we're gonna we're gonna stay basic, right? Today. Principles, right? Because we're gonna ramp up quickly in the next two days. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What are we gonna talk about tomorrow and the next day? Uh, so tomorrow we're going to focus on uh, like a design exercise, a UX thinking exercise on how to put yourself in the shoes of a customer and then work through a problem and a hypothesis and then end out with a minimum viable experience and, and we're, we're gonna work through that on camera to give you a, a scope of what it's like to have an ex, like an, a UX thinking exercise and then the next day we'll, we'll likely talk about um, something more narrow in scope maybe like user onboarding or maybe some like navigation <laughs> items or something like that Gubbiness says that the Illuminati patriarchy is, a, is it's the a good, only hierarchy <laughs> 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 nice um, okay so uh, so UX is a big topic, mm -hmm. and today we're focusing on these component parts of design principles. And we can see them everywhere you look in, in terms of uh, space, size, color, contrast, alignment, repetition, just to name a few. Um, but hierarchy exists everywhere. Mm -hmm. And a clear hierarchy, in terms of, for, you know, for us designers, a clear hierarchy, hierarchy it's a fun word, mm. is necessary for, for good design communication. A clear hierarchy is necessary for design, good design communication. Yes, absolutely. I'll buy that. Hierarchy, it really is the lens through which we see the entire world. That's right. It helps us put everything that we know in our minds into context of each other, right? Okay. So clear, creating a clear hierarchy as designers is our primary goal mm -hmm. of design communication. Everything else falls under it, mm -hmm. right? So as technology gets... Uh, faster and bigger and, and allows us to access more and more information, it, it comes to us as designers to really have control over our hierarchies and be able to distill complex sets of data down for our users. And the more you can do this, the better you are at this as a professional, okay. the more valuable you are. Well, it's true, right? Because you're able to create simple solutions for complex problems with the understanding of these principles and t the tools and the principles that they provide. And that's a very nuanced skill. Yeah. It's not easily done. Yeah. And that's why having a clear understanding of how a hierarchy, this concept, 
applies to everything we do, it can really level you up. And that's what we're trying to do today. All right, sounds good. All right, do we have any... Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? What? You're typing. Uh, <laughs> I can see. I, so I hear Harky. That, that was Dev Tips 4. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Los, what am I looking at here? Um, I want you to, okay, not just what am I. <laughs> how, how, we, we see two elements here. Yeah, yeah. Can we show those on the, on the. the yeah, yeah, they can see them. They're okay, like behind got us. Got it. Ooh, that, those are big. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we see two elements on a page. Yeah. How can hierarchy help us understand the relationship. What, what we're seeing, yeah, okay. yeah. So we're seeing off the bat a, a big black circle, mm -hmm. right? And that draws attention to itself because of its size. Yet you see another circle, so they're both circles in. <laughs> uh huh. Uh -huh well, how do you sure. say his name? Dinioni. Yeah. He says balls. <laughs> Those are balls. What do you see? Balls. Two balls, right? <laughs> um, and the red one is calling more importance to itself. Some balls, son. <laughs> Sorry, Asymm right, right. Asymmetry, though. I, I'm, I'm knocking you off your game. What do you see? You're saying uh, the red one, what? Uh, calls more attention to itself. Okay. So, like, if you were to ac abstract this to UI, for example, sure. You'd have the black circle as the main content, and then the red circle could be a, a call to action, mm -hmm. right? Or something like that. And the fact that they're both circles, you know that there's some relationship to them. Right, because they're not, you know, one's not a hexagon. Yeah. So, there's, they do have relations. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting to me is that you said that the red circle calls more attention to it. Even though it's smaller yeah, than the black, even though it's a smaller ball, right? That's right. Smaller ball, <laughs> smaller. <laughs> you know, smaller ball always gets the attention. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Um, mm. All right, so let's let's make this uh, composition a little bit more complex okay. and and look at it again and, and see how does hierarchy help us to understand what we're seeing. And these are just abstract shapes. Right. So do another dissection here. So another dissection here is the main content. The main attention is the big square. The big black square, mm -hmm. right? Um, it could be like maybe like the main content on a page or, or something like that. And this then, is the first thing you see if you squint at it. It's the first thing that is like, look at me, I'm here. Yeah. And then the next thing again is the red circle. Okay. Right? Um, because it's red, it's upper right hand corner, and then by relation on the left hand side. You mentioned upper right hand corner. What does that mean to you? So. Uh, Maybe it's like an ad or something. An ad? Yeah, okay. so if you look at YouTube, like there's like promoted videos mm -hmm. or an ad, it's, it's, it, there's a common UX practice to, to reserve that space for, for additional information that relates to the this main is, content. This is really interesting, um, and I want to pull out something from what you're saying, is that hierarchy is also determined by our cultural norms. That's right. Right? So That's we right. live in a, in a culture where we're reading right to left. Left to Sorry. right. Sorry. <laughs> left to right. <laughs> Wait, what do you read? I've been doing this wrong. <laughs> Uh, where we read left to right, top to bottom, and you pulled out that the thing that's the most right may be auxiliary. It may be like an aside content mm -hmm. type. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Cool. And then on the left-hand side mm -hmm. is a uh, desaturated series of circles. Um, and so maybe it's because they're desaturated, they, they're tertiary in, in attention. Mm -hmm. And so it could be navigational elements or, or something like that. And then on the lower right-hand corner, uh, you have squares again. Maybe it's r relations to the main concept because it is a square. Mm -hmm. There's three of them. Uh, by proximity, they're they're near. So maybe it's metadata. Okay. That's that's attached to the to the main content here. Right, right. That that's all very interesting. And you and you got all this information just by trying to deduce relationships in in space. Yeah. Now the, the interesting thing about hierarchy is is that not only do they teach us about what is connected. Mm -hmm. Right by relating things together, but also teach us what is separate by understanding the differences in them. Right. 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 And so, in when I showed you this slide over here, there's a list of all these visual cues that we have. Mm -hmm. Consider like we're sitting at a big control panel, and each of these cues has like these knobs and levers, and we're twisting and pulling. And you know, like like if you make it bigger, what do you do over here? Maybe increase the contrast or the color or you know the texture over here. And there's a lot of different like knobs to, right. to kind of turn when we're deciding on how do we construct an understandable narrative for the user. Okay. Right. In other words, how to build a clear hierarchy. Right. And these are our design principles as those levers and knobs. Yes, the, the design principles are the levers and levers and knobs. So here we have here just a very very basic text block. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to Adobe XD and just show you that by switching these levers and knobs, we can make this a lot more readable, a lot more understandable, and actually more pleasurable. Okay. And it's just text. Okay. Right. So let me. I think it's right. No. Where is my Adobe? There we are. 
Okay. <clears throat> yum, yum, yum. Okay, so... We have a <laughs> get, to, get to work. Yeah, let's let's do some design stuff. Okay, so the first thing I do is I'm gonna I'm gonna parse this content. I'm gonna see that okay, here's what looks like it could be a headline. So I'm gonna use the the property of scale and just bump this up a little bit and say okay, that makes more sense. It's a headline. Okay. And I can use the the property of proximity and move it away a little bit mm -hmm. to, to to kind of say this is important. Look at this first. Okay. And I can also use color and density, make it a little darker. Now all of a sudden. We look at this, and I've just done a few little tweaks, and this is immediately more parsable. Right. Now, we have also this, this line here, which is the source. Mm -hmm. If I separate that out, now we have a reference to what we're looking at. Right. And maybe we can call it, uh, or call it, maybe we can like tease it a little different, um, use, a, use a different font. Let's try, use, because um, everything is a sans serif. Right. Let's use Georgia. Mm, your go-to serif. I, well, I like it because it's very readable. <laughs> I, I, do, I do like Georgia. And everybody has it installed, so it's yeah. good. I'm old school like that. Like, it matters to me <laughs> what font you guys can see. <laughs> Web safe. I know font, face, whatever. Anyway, um, so we have Georgia here. Let's make it italic. Okay. And kind of, like, bring out the, the kind of, like, make it a little bit more of a whisper. Yeah, right? nice, nice. So all of these things have visual cues that help us to understand things. Um, this color here could be a little darker. Let's bump it up. Mm, maybe 555, 555. Five, 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 five. Okay. Okay, cool. And now now we have three different levels of color. This is full black. This is like a little bit more than neutral gray, and this is pretty neutral gray. So w what you've done simply with color is created a hierarchy of, of most prominence to least prominence Yeah. by its it, saturation. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. And, and an interesting thing about this is that this line here in if you're reading top to bottom is it, you know it, you could probably say it'd be like a reference right like right. like a citation so mm -hmm. it, it could be at the bottom or even if your if your hierarchy is strong enough you could put it you could you could create really interesting um, compositions mm -hmm. because your hierarchy will allow you to do that this this word right here typography is so strong like i'm going to make it bold a little bit more bold here and it's so strong that we understand that this, even though it's out of order, mm -hmm. is still metadata. It's still subservient to this title here. You can even desaturate how black it is too. This one here? Yeah, yeah sure could. Like no need, no need for it to be full. Yeah. And it still, right. still, still accomplishes the same thing. Yeah, I mean, we could, we could take this, uh, grab a nice little color, let's say, this kind of periwinkle. Right. Send everything to the back. And now all of a sudden, let me uh, make this more visible. Now all of a sudden, like we have a lot more emotion that's happening as mm -hmm. a response to um, as a response to this this composition, okay. simply based on color. Right. 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 All right. Uh, let's make that a little bit stronger so you can read it. And then you can use things that are little graphical elements that are not necessarily um, type. Right. And just kind of embellish things. Like I'm giving. By underlining this, like even partially, I'm, I'm using like a little bit of a Haas style or a Swiss style here. Right. But it can um, it can set the tone for, for what we're seeing by by using like all these different tools. And so what I want to show you guys. Nice. Yeah. Oh, right? that, that pair And also, local. I'll control my measure too. Bring this down a little bit. Oh, I like how it just wraps. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's called a text box. Will you look at that? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, principles, man. Principles. So the idea here <laughs> is that we've used just like all these uh, these knobs and levers to quickly change the composition from that mm -hmm. to that. So not only is it easier to understand, it's more delightful and engaging to use. Yeah. As let me, it, let me see that again. Okay, this is before. This is after. I want to read that. You yeah. You want to? You can go back to the stream. And rewatch it go, and go read, read it. I'm gonna go read it. Like now. typography. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see what's on the next slide. Okay. Now we're gonna do the squint test. Mm, what is the squint test? Right. <laughs> the squint test is a, is like is a really fun way for designers to figure out what their hierarchy is. It's a really quick a quick gut check. Um, if you if you see a designer who's trying to figure out like how somebody's gonna parse their composition, you see him doing like this all the time. <laughs> squinting, moving back, jumping in and out. Because what they're trying to do is use this squint, which when you do your eyes in a squint, it kind of like blurs everything. Mm -hmm. it, it, it removes um, the details. It, re it removes fidelity. 
Rumus Fidelity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And leaves you with just big blobs. Mm -hmm. Blobs. Like remember when we were looking at these content blocks right here, these big elements? Mm. These were these were ambiguous in their meaning. Mm -hmm. And by doing the squint test, we can squint up and we can uh, we can deduce what is our actual hierarchy aside from our intentions. That's right. Because I might intend for you to understand something some way, but when I do the squint test or have somebody else look at it, another, another way to do a squint test is say, you haven't seen it yet, and I go, hey, can you look at this and tell me what is the most important thing to you? What should you do next? Right. And then you'd give me that quick litmus, let me know that I'm on the right track or I need to start you right. know, twisting a few more knobs. Right. All right. When I, uh, resource says, when I squint, all I see is the Travis head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cockroach Film says, that's what we do in film, too, the squint test. That's oh, interesting. Oh, nice. Uh, I didn't know I that. would like to know more about that because in my, because, you know, coming from a design and, like, layout practice, right. video feels very much like this is what it is. Do with what you can. <laughs> Good luck. So I'd, I'd be interested guess, in hearing I guess, more. I guess, I guess that's uh, if you squint how, how someone moves through the screen or something like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like blocking and stuff. Yeah. That's right. interesting. That we don't. <laughs> that's not what we're doing. I, I'm really interested in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's look at the squint test. Let's do some squinties uh, oh, right here. I'm ready to squint. So what I'm going to do is I, I prepared some squint tests for Los. Oh. I have I have blurred out some some popular oh, no. layouts. It's because I slapped you twice. Yeah. This is your punishment. If you're just joining, I I won. <laughs> I won. You should rewind it and watch Lo slap me twice. <laughs> I did get you a good slap at the end though. Yeah, but my beard padded the slap. Your beard is so mm. so bushy. <laughs> Mine is like str it grows long, but it's not strong. <laughs> long it's, but not strong. It's weak in the knees. Mm, interesting. Anyway, no more about my beard. Uh, so what I have for you here are prepared a few a uh, few squint tests. Mm -hmm. I want you to drag these. Uh, these numerals onto what you perceive as the hierarchy. Okay. So start with saying, what is the first thing I notice? What do I perceive as being the most important? Okay. And what follows on from there? So I'm going to okay. scoot this laptop over to you. All right. Sounds good. Okay. I'm going to grab your mouse. Or you can use it whatever you want. Mm, I, like, I like the mice. All right. So number one. So I know this is YouTube. Uh, but by squinting, that's, hey, that's let, the... Let me, let me, Bother here, Cockroach. He's, I'm just wanting to know more about what he's talking about with All film. Right. Cockroach film says it's easy to capture a tight shot, but to compose a truly beautiful wide shot, you need to simplify. And with a squint test, we see if it works. Beautiful, beautiful. Especially for wildlife, which is what he does. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Cockroach films. Uh, I'm gonna look you up. Zane is lame. Says I can do a 400 pound squint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So number one is this main main content here maybe it's the video and then here's some suggested content uh -huh. and then maybe number three just because of the colors this this thing right here okay and then maybe we have like just comments or something all right so grab the the blur sheet and pull it off yeah yeah just remove it uh, and then tell me what you like what what can we learn here and and were you is this a good hierarchy is it bad what can we learn I'd say this is a good hierarchy, right? Okay. If, if the purpose of YouTube is to provide content that's consumable, i.e. watching videos, then the first thing you want to see is the freaking video that you're there for. Fair. Right? Um, and then I guess the next natural progression when you're on YouTube is a suggestion of, hey, you're here to watch videos, might as well want to watch another one. Uh -huh. Or we suggest, so yeah, that makes sense. Up next, giving information of what is happening so you know where to go. Um, what's this video all about? You have the information about the video and then, yeah, yeah, this makes sense to and me. And then engage down there. Engage down here. Let me ask you about the difference between two and three. Okay. Because I noticed your, your eye continued on, do we know about the F shape? Have we talked about the F shape? We haven't talked about the F shape. Tell us about what, what, what is the F shape. So, in Western cultures, Yeah. okay, where we read from left to right, um, you can do these like, uh, you can look up F-shape maps and what happens is they put eye tracking software and what you see when people look at a page is that they start on the upper hand, upper left hand corner and then with their eyes create a hot spot that looks like the letter F, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So naturally we would discern from that, okay, if someone starts on the upper left, i.e. this video, the next point that they're going to see by collecting this data of eye tracking is that it's going to go to the edge of the right hand screen. Right. And, and I, I was demonstrated yeah. that by saying number two mm. is actually on, on the next column. Right. Right. Instead of going down. So, so the F shape is like this, 
this, and then down. That's right. Right? That's how kind of we people that's how we scan mm -hmm. a lot of the times. It's not the only kind of pattern, but it's one of the more prominent ones okay. uh, for us. Now, this is a great demonstration of the F shape. Mm -hmm. Why do you think I mean I would I, if I was designing this hierarchy, I would think, okay, we have a little bit of a fail here because the metadata of the video might be as well important. Like if you're watching this video, show me, somebody shows it to you, hey, look at this funny video. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to see the title and author. But we've got suggested videos. But now let's consider what is YouTube's prerogative? What is their priority? Their goal is watch time. Yeah, keep you. Keep me entertained. Not mm -hmm. really tell me what I'm watching, but show me more things. Right. So maybe this is actually a really, really successful hire. Right, because with UX, which we'll talk about more tomorrow, is you have to find the balance of internal customers, business goals, and your customers' goals. Yep. Right? And yep. so you want your customer to be successful, and then once a company matures, there's real business value. So in this case, the value of YouTube is show you more videos, i.e. stay on their platform longer, and they can serve more ads. That makes sense to bottom, me. Bottom line. I got another one for you. Another squint test. Mm, this okay, one's maybe I shouldn't have done the title, so I'll just remove this title. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Do the squint test. Squint test, number one, giant hand with a pencil. Number two, maybe this. Number three, up here. Number four, down yonder. Wow, so this breaks the F pattern completely. Completely breaks it. Yeah, yeah. So tell me what we got going on here. Uh, you wanna do the reveal? Uh, yeah, 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 why don't you <clears throat> take the blur off? All right, blur, blur is gone. So, this is, I mean, this is this is a, a web page by Paper by 53, which is an, it's an app that the stylists and this is a sales draw. page. It's a sales page. Sales page. It's a, a, mar it's a marketing, landing page. Right? Yeah, landing page for and a so, marketing campaign. So the first thing I see, uh, and this is my interpretation, is the hand holding the pencil. Yeah, it makes sense because that's what they want to sell. Can, can I can I back up just 30 seconds? Sure. Underline the idea that this is a different type of page than we looked at before. That's right. Where the other the YouTube page was intended for consumption. You know, we're, we're consuming media, consuming information, where this is intended to sell you. Yeah. So it's going to be a little bit more emotionally based, yeah. a little bit more impact focused. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's good. Like that's with good. that context, how is this hierarchy different? Yeah. So the, the, hier the hierarchy is different because. <laughs> I'm more interruption. We're like, we're not using the F pattern, is one big deal. We're not using the F pattern. F pattern. And this is my interpretation of what it's like. But you're right. a user, so you're, a user. you're the right one. I am the right one. Yeah, users are always right. <laughs> <laughs> like designers are always wrong. Yeah, so the first. Especially in user testing. <laughs> so the first thing I see is this hand with the pencil. And I, I guess it's trying to get uh, tell a story of emotion. Yeah. Right? Yes. And so emotionally hooking you with like, hey, look what it would be like with you having the pencil, drawing, etc. And then the number two is the CTA. Buy now. Buy now. Right. Yeah. Uh, number three titles it in case you didn't know what it was. Uh huh. And number four, once you've you're done uh, above the fold here. If you're not convinced. If you're not convinced, then we have more. There's more. More ideas of all sizes for you. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, let me quickly do this. cover your face. All right, now let's do more uh, more. We have, we have a few of these. These are fun. Do you... These are fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Squint ah, test. Squint test, number one. Yes, squinting at home. Are you squinting at home? Well, you don't need to because we're squinting for you. F patterns, dude. <laughs> Darko. <laughs> F patterns. Number one, CTA. It's the first thing I see. Yeah, it's. There's a color they're, contrast. They're using color to really bring out the hierarchy there. Right, the, right. The con contrast is not necessarily a, a knob to turn, but it's an effect of the other knobs. It is. Right, so we're using color to bump up contrast. That's right, that's right. Which will define a hierarchy. So there's a little bit of a nuance there. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Number two, behind. The oh, blur. you're you're behind. Let me um, mark. Send. Oh, I don't want. Uh. <laughs> Wait, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Gra go. Grab all these and then do a forward. Wait, send. Bring to front. How about that? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, this. Might. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We we see it. Mm, oh no. <laughs> Just do these three and four. Bring. Okay, whatever. Yeah, we'll, we're gonna delete the sheet in a little bit. All right, bring to front. Here we go. Number three. One, two. So number two is this input field. Mm. You think it's an input field? I think. You just—it's so squinty. How can so we squinty. even tell? Oh, I kind of saw it. <laughs> this is a, a Sam Wob. He asks if this is a Photoshop blur or you can do that in XD. Yeah, this is an XD thing. It's a background blur. It's a background you, blur. You, you and click on it and then you check this box background. Right blur. now, there's also a little triangle there. You can right there. You see that triangle yeah. by the word black background blur. No, oh, no, up a little one. bit. Oh, yeah, so you can, you can tune it to an object blur too. This okay. is like a new update today. Okay, cool, cool. 
Uh, I think they'll talk about it at five if you want to stay in for more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you you keep working. Uh, Splo- Splooper asks, what are the numbers for? Right now, we're, he's putting the numbers on what he thinks is the order of impact, the hierarchy of this page, right? So what is the first thing he looks at? What is the most important thing? Yeah, okay. Are we good? All right, remove the blur. Remove the blur. Whoosh. All right, so this is not a sales page. This is not a content consumption page. This is a sign-up page page mm. for Threadless. Okay. They want you to become an artist on their sh- with their shop and sell your art. Okay. So they need to, their goals would be like, let me explain you with how the platform works and get you to sign up as fast as can. Okay. All right. Okay. So show me how effective they were. So number one, they want to get you to know that you can start now, right? So the CTA, they want to tell you that, hey, this isn't a start later or free, <laughs> right? They, they need to be explicit. This is happening now. Yeah, that's right? pretty good. I like I like the label there. Mm-hmm. There's there's no confusion about what you're supposed to be doing. You're starting now. It doesn't say buy or anything. So mm-hmm. the goal is to get you into the funnel as mm-hmm. quickly as possible. Um, they're not hiding the input field. They're putting it straight up and center above the fold. And then you see the. You're talking about number two. Number two. Yeah. What's interesting here is there's there's a, a nuance here that I think is quite nice. Um, the labels of the fields here, you have username, email, and password, which is pretty standard. Mm-hmm. But the pr- first one says your shop dot, your shop URL dot threadless.com. So it's, it's enabling you to, this is something different, a little bit different okay. than these design principles, but what it's doing here psychologically, it's enabling you to envision what it will be like when you're done with this form. Right. And when it says start now, like, like I want it to be, you know, dev tips dot threadless.com. Mm-hmm. And by writing that, you can, you're confirming in your, in your own mind what the what the vision is. That's right. It's pretty great, ah, huh? Nice. It's, it's smart. And then number three for me is down downtown. I'm interested lower. in that. You went down there instead yeah. of to the, the to the whole page headline. But I guess the reason that happened is okay. So you have this F pattern. Yeah. And what they've done is they at the second step stage of an F pattern is at the end they're increasing the contrast and visibility. Like, hey, here's what's up. Mm. So I don't necessarily want to travel back. My, oh, my I see. My next inclination is to continue Let's down. Continue down on your the, journey. My journey of, of scanning. Interesting. Cool. Uh, yeah. We have some mobile versions now. Ooh. All right. So you don't. All right. Delete it. <laughs> I need to delete these titles. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is fun. Uh, figure out what is important and um, what you should be looking at, what you should be doing next. All right, so this thing. Um, this thing. And this is kind of getting away. Uh, yeah, right here. This is interesting. This is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, this time, I'm going to pull off the blur, and I'm going to talk about what you did and why I think you did it, and then you can confirm or deny. Okay, so here goes the blur. This is a this is the um, iOS default podcast app. Okay. Why is there not a Trav and Lowe's podcast on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> Who did this screenshot? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, all of these are great, scre- great uh, podcasts, by the way. <laughs> should have been three. Trials, <laughs> I know it should have been like, just ours. Okay, so uh, what's interesting to me is that you did one, two, and then three up at the top, and then down for four. But one, two, and four are the exact same things. Yeah. This is a list. Yeah. And it's kind of the 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 is like a media type composition where you have a thumbnail and a name and metadata. It's okay. a very common pattern, okay. but they're but they're in a repeatable list. And you pointed at each one of the thumbnails uh, as as a, a an attraction for your eye. Yeah. Now this is interesting also because now this is a mobile design, so we have a lot less area, and so oftentimes that means that our designs have to be a little bit more specific, constrained. You know, we're, we are constrained by size, but oftentimes it means that our hierarchy needs to be even more pronounced. Mm-hmm. And if the if the purpose of this is enable you to get to your content as fast and as easily as possible, this is a humongous win. It is one, two, win. three to make sure you're in the right section. You're, right. you're scanning around. <laughs> you know, you're, you're moving quick. Like yeah, yeah. like we move quicker than our brains can process. Yeah. Our eyes search stuff, and then our brains go, what did we just see? Uh, oh, right, I Be- get it now. Because we exist in mental models that are predetermined mm-hmm. because of our experience of seeing mobile and mobile time and time again. Right, right. right. This is great. This is great. Let's do another one. Okay. Uh, so close your eyes. I'm going to remove the title. <laughs> ah. <laughs> You're going to recognize this one. Though. Okay. Uh, do my hierarchy here. 
Is this the McDonald's homepage? There <laughs> 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 we go. Bring to the front. What did I just do? What shortcut? I don't know. What shortcut are you trying? It's with my left hand. Is that I real life? I don't know if I'm doing it right because it's the wrong hand. <laughs> I'll just bring it to the bring to front. to the front. I don't do the right clicks. Okay. All right. Number one. For some re yeah, I'll say here, <clears throat> then here, then here, and here. Uh, Muhammad Du Zakrika Diva says, I want to ask about that test. Should it be done after finishing the design? The, if you're talking about the squint test, the entire time. It's so fast to do it. Boom, squint. Boom, squint. Right. Now you try <laughs> squint. He's slow. Don't don't <laughs> don't let him get. <laughs> don't let him do your squints. <laughs> boom, squint. Boom, squint. Yeah, it's so quick. You should be doing it all, the entire all time. throughout your design. Just jump back and be like, "Is that right? Is that right?" And just like get different mm -hmm. perspectives. Tap tap the guy on the shoulder and say, "What do you think about this?" I do that all the time, mm -hmm. every day, all day, mm -hmm. all day, every day. All day, every so, day. So uh, let's remove the shade and see what's up. This, is a, this is a midday with Travis Lowe. <laughs> midday with Travis Lowe. Midday with Travis Lowe. All right. <laughs> Um, he said, uh, Kern Gaming says, you should green screen the cantina in the background. Oh, man. Missed opportunity there. Missed opportunity. <laughs> the cantina is where we record at night. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> nice. All right. So what do we have for it'll our hierarchy night, here? Be nighttime. Nighttime? All right. For our hierarchy here, uh, tip, do you XM? Uh, Kern Gaming says it'd be good to make somebody else do the squint. And that's oh. what they see. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the more varied you can have your inputs, yeah. then the more... Uh, the more actual, you know, it's going to be. Right. All right. Let's go through this. So number one is this, whatever this thing is. So I, because I use Facebook, they're 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 doing this. Uh, what do you call this? It's more like additive. Uh, they're trying to make your experience more delightful. Facebook is. Facebook is. So at the top, when you uh, are they going to unfriend Facebook, me with everybody I don't like? Mm. That would <laughs> no, no. At the top, for example, it's the first day of summer, Travis. Hello, son. It's been a while. But what they're doing is they're trying to add, like, hey, the weather is this guy. Like a place where, since you're spending a lot of time, maybe not you. I think this is here because I don't log in a lot. Oh. So it's like, hello, it's been a while. They're trying to make me... Hello, son. It's been a while. They're talking about summer. It's just, it's an ad for summer? Mm hmm Share. There's a share button on... that. I don't understand Facebook. <laughs> I don't understand Facebook. All right, whatever. Tell, so number, tell me what's so up. So number one is this um, what this ad or this this delightful uh, UI that they're trying. And then number two brings me up to their header, and I wonder why they want me to search. What am I searching for? That's interesting. Search is a more likely to be their business uh, uh, strategy than mm. than your delight strategy. Okay, makes sense. And then number three and four are the notifications at the bottom on the uh, tab bar at the bottom. You noticed the, the color, screen. the red. Yeah. You were like, oh, it's red. It's red. It must Dude, be important. It? No, there's there's a lot you can learn about that. Like, I, I'm the guy that has, like, if there's, like, a, a red on one of my badges on my, my home screen, I'm like, no, go away. Check <laughs> yeah. my notification. I hate it. I yeah. hate, get rid yeah. of the red. <laughs> so, like, that's a very powerful tool that they're using. And, and what are they using mostly? It's color. Mm. Color is so, is so powerful. That's why you, you don't see it used. I mean, if you want to use it well, you have to use restraint and pull back everything else. So everything else, look, when we look at this page, we see everything else is very monosaturated or desaturated unless it's content. Yeah. So the only things that have high color here are the image, the, the, the raster images, this guy's right. face, this lady's dress, this dude's face, mm. and then and then this, this, the blue right up at the top, but it's very desaturated, very very understated. Yeah. Although it is heavier, which is why you looked at it the second. And it's heavy. Cool. M oh, one more thing. I'm not looking because. Okay, fine. Try not. All right, go. All right, this is number one. Oh, you did this again. Yeah. The reason I'm having him do six of these is not because I didn't prepare enough material, which is. That's the second reason I'm having him to do six of these. No, the reason I'm having him to do six of these is is like there's so many different ways that this can be used, right? There's so many different ways that hierarchy can be demonstrated, revealed to us in order to complete whatever is the goal of the designer, uh, which in this case would be to get me to watch some, some shows. Mm. So tell me what you did here and why. In their hero section, they have with color a big black square Mm -hmm. um, for maybe their like prominent show that they want to push to me, like hey, right. we need more viewership here. It's and full bleed. Yeah, it's they're trying to get me to watch that right now. They think I'm going to be interested in it, or maybe they produced it and they want me to 
you know, whatever. Yep, and then they Number want two. and then they want want me to watch The Bachelorette. Oh snap! Did you see it? I didn't. Dude, Chad, get off the get off the show. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> And then number oh, I'm th- watching this season. <laughs> I'm like, Chad's an animal. Can you believe it? <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. You I don't. Haven't. You don't even know. It, I don't even it's, know. It's the Chad's Lorette. Chad's Lorette. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. And then number three is another show. And number four, uh, it was a, it was a challenge between this one on the same row as this one and putting it down here. But the color contrast when you squint, uh huh, is what will call the, call the attention. Which is interesting because. At this point, we're not talking about the designer of the app and how this person constructed the hierarchy. We're talking about how this person made a good thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And if you could scroll it over a little bit more, we'd see like, how are they balancing color with contrast? Like like the the pink heart is very isolated on white. And like, how does that draw an eye? That's very interesting. Okay, Okay. so these are all the six uh, examples. Uh, We're doing the squint test. Mm -hmm. Do you even squint? Do you even squint, bro? (laughs) Bruh. (laughs) Bruh, you squint? <laughs> Chad was nuts. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sad he's gone. I'm sad All he's right. gone. Dude, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, okay, squint test, done. Okay, the toolbox. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna jump into the, those, I think I pulled out maybe eight or nine or seven or eight or nine. Okay. <laughs> There's a number of elements that I pulled out of the toolbox so we can talk about in depth okay. and see how one, uh, how the designer of these pages that we're going to be looking at okay. used this specific principle. Okay, cool. So the toolbox is where we put those tools. Let's pull them out and look at them one right. by one. I'm ready. First one is size, right? That's using scale to create contrast in the composition. Let's see what we got for size. Okay, this is the, the this new page just launched this week for um, Mac OS new operating system. Hmm. And I'm going to show you this. This kind of blew me away. Okay. How they used scale. That's pretty cool. What happened? That's pretty cool. What happened to you emotionally? Not necessarily like how did they do this, but like, what did they? What did they try to accomplish? What did they do, and was it effective? Yeah. Well, at first they start with a hint of something in the background. It's mm-hmm. desaturated, it's in the back. There's no fidelity, there's low fidelity to yep, it. Yep. So they peek at something there. And then when you start scrolling, um, at this point it starts to come into vision. You're like, oh, that's really cool. I wanna be there. I want to go to there. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, it's the new operating system on the laptop. Yeah. Um, this, this is a really complex example of scale at work. Because usually when you think like, oh, let's just use size, let's use scale, you think like, oh, just make the headline bigger. Yeah. Right? That's that's a pretty easy way to kind of yeah. use the knob of scale. Yeah. But this is interesting, is that they use this image so big and stretch it out so wide and pulled you back dramatically that it that it made this announcement or this the reveal mm-hmm. very, very important and succinct. Um, it reminds me of like there's there's like um, in architecture. Mm-hmm. There's this idea of a reveal. Okay. Like, uh, I forget the house, I think maybe in a, a Frank Lloyd Wright one, where he, he takes you through this hallway that gets smaller and smaller. Okay. And then when you go through the door and walk into this room, it's like a child's room and it's big and it has clouds painted on the, the oh, ceiling. Cool. There's like a, a train track around. So, so like it's, it's this reveal, this idea that, that something is happening. Right. And with digital media, we have this unique opportunity to jump off of the page right. in these like dynamic ways. Right. And, uh, and this reveal uses scale in a way that's just a little bit more than making the type big. But if you scroll up to the top, what are we looking at? Mac OS Sierra. That, that's scale too, right? Mm-hmm. Just showing us mm-hmm. the most important thing about this. Cool. Kay. So that's scale. The next one I want to talk about is color. Mmm, color. <laughs> Tell me how color is impacting this composition. Mm, I see two things. One, the title, um, Endless Within. So. It brings my attention to what it's, what this is. Start this is I don't even know what this. Oh, this is lingerie. Mm, nice. I thought it was a movie when I found this website. <laughs> well, so it looks, it, it, it looks it like a movie, in. right? It like it's in. very, it's very cinematic. It's pulling you in. And there's motion too. Her face is moving around. Oh, whoa! It's After Effects, like dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. it's like what is those jib jabs? Is it jib jabs? Jib jab. <laughs> and then the hamburger icon in the upper right hand corner. Right. So an interesting thing to use color with impact. One good strategy is to take everything around it 
and pull the color out. Okay. So that way when the color comes, when you look at this headline, it's very strong, it's very yeah. pronounced. Yeah. If this was all in color, you know, if, if the, the photograph was all the original, uh, you know, not, not black and white, yeah. it would have a lot less impact on the title here. Yeah. So color is, is a balance between the actual values and saturations and hues that you're using, yeah. and also the, the, the addition or subtraction of it from things around it. Yeah, super cool. Great. Let's talk about the next principle, contrast. Now contrast is one of those interesting ones that is a result of other ones happening, mm -hmm. right? So in this color one, we can see that there is contrast and it's built by color. That's right. Right? Okay. okay. So I just wanted to show you this. This is a huge, there's a lot of contrast going on in this mm -hmm. page and they're using color to do it. And I had actually bookmarked this example as the color example. Okay. But then I was thinking, how do I want to show contrast? This is just so contrast. You tell me how this is affecting you. Well, left and right already you have a giant orange blob and then the white one there's contrast already there so mm -hmm. it's, what it's telling me though is that hey this side is important and this side is important this this side is setting the baseline for emotion it, it, it well, i'm talking about the left side showing yeah. you like like this is what we think is what you should understand yeah and then this is where you should focus it's where you should work this this is the this is the um the setup, mm -hmm. and this is the punchline, okay. if you will. You know what I mean? Got it. Yeah, this is really good. This is a great example of contrast. There, there's no, there's nothing soft here. Mm -hmm. It's very harsh. It's very good. What's interesting? Go back to that. Yeah. Is everything is harsh except for the CTA and the rounded um, buttons here? Yeah, that's a good point. Rounded buttons, rounded triangles here. Interesting. Mm. I wonder why they did that. I don't know. Maybe stylistic. Yeah. Alignment. Mmm. Alignment. Al Ali Gnim Ent. <laughs> Little Al Ali Gnim. Uh, th this one that I found is, is like a really obvious choice. Okay. This is the this is um, IL One's Grid System okay. website. This is a reference for all things grid. Um, but we see that the alignment plays a big uh, part. Here. Right. Not only vertical alignment in terms of grid columns, but also there's a very specific baseline grid here. Yeah. And the rhythms that are built using alignment in this layout are, are very strong. Mm -hmm. They're very strong. I, there used to be like a hotkey you could push to get the grid to pop up. Oh, that's But cool. he redid the layout a little bit and, I, and it's gone now. But I, I always loved this website. There's a great example of not just Oh, I'm using you know three column design, do, 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 do. but yeah. like, but in terms of, of creating a, a rhythm, yeah, it's good. Way good, way good. A ligament. Next one. <laughs> a ligament. Repetition. <laughs> repetition. All right. So why would repetition be one of the things that you can use? What does repetition call for? It sets a pattern. Something. It sets expectation. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's look at jury buildings. This is interesting as well because it, it looks very asymmetrical, very kind of like uh, thrown down. Yeah. But when you see what's really happening, we have a white block content, white block content. We're bouncing back and forth. We have like expectation and pattern that's built out of this very textual kind of layout. Right. What's nice about this is um, in the modern web page design, mm -hmm. it's it's modern or simple to do a, a long page uh, scroll, Okay. right? And so what they eff effectively do by this is making that scroll more interesting, mm -hmm. helping you go further down the page. Right, it, like e each, each uh, re repetition of the mm -hmm. pattern. Reinforces the previous and keeps you going. Kind of helps you mm -hmm. just walking down the street. I like it. Okay. I like it a lot. Repetition, proximity. What does proximity mean? Uh, how near or far you are from a UI element. Right. Another way of thinking about this is grouping. Okay. A, a, a very easy way to understand that is just group similar items. Yep. You know, why would you have a, na a nav element up here and a nav element down here and a, you know what I mean? Like, like help people to understand what they should be doing by grouping things that are similar with each other. 
Okay, proximity. Let's look at an example for that. Oh, Twitter. Jeez. It, it, <laughs> Twitter is an interesting website to look at because the content is so dense. It is dense. You have a lot of dense content, that, and you think like, oh, Twitter, a tweet, 140 characters. But, but it's gotten to a place now where a tweet can be a very complex media yeah. element, yeah. right? So I'm looking at this and seeing how they group things together. You know, a really easy example is over here on the left with trends you can see that they're grouped together. If, if I want to look at trends, I know exactly where to look. Yep. Now let's take a look at this, this media element that's kind of like gotten shade when I hovered over it. Okay. Tell me, how does grouping or proximity help you understand and parse and use this media element? So there's three things on this media element. Okay. Number one, by proximity, is who posted this? And everything that has to do with that. Face, uh, comment, uh, name, Twitter handle and, and the timing of when it was done. Yeah. All parsed by proximity. Now, we're, we're still using that, uh, the media object pattern, mm -hmm. which is an F pattern, mm -hmm. right? Like if looking at just, let me draw a box, just this F right here. Over, down, over, down. It's cool. It's and cool and that, these. That still applies in a smaller at smaller scale. It, 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 it happens. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. Of, like I can look at this and see many F patterns happening in my, in, in independently of each other and yeah. in combination with the whole layout composition itself. Super cool. Yeah. So uh, what else are we seeing in this one uh, the next tweet th object? Then the next part by proximity is this thing that was retweeted. Right? Okay. Is everything falls in line with it. It's like, hey, Travis is talking about this. Uh-huh. And we have this this idea of the, like it's like this part, like the box was wrapping around it all together. Right. It constrains and groups and puts them in the proximity of itself and saying this is a parent of this quotation That's here, right. which is the retweet. And then the last thing is, again, by using proximity, is any action you can take on this tweet or this card um, are all aligned at the bottom by size, color, and proximity. Yeah, Twitter Twitter is a very interesting thing to look at because it, it they add features um, usually in response to their community. Yeah. Like they did not invent the retweet, their yeah. community did it and they just kind of codified it and cataloged it. Yeah. So so the layout can be very chaotic sometimes if you didn't grow with it. Mm -hmm. So it is a, it is a priority of a, the Twitter designers to help a new person or somebody coming back to it after a while to quickly understand what's going on here. And it's very difficult because there's such a dense information here. Yeah. And that that's why we see a, a, a very liberal use of F patterns, of putting borders around things to group them together, yeah. putting similar um, objects and elements and tools. For example, you mentioned these buttons, how that pattern kind of repeats itself everywhere. Right. Yeah, Twitter's an interesting bird to look at. All right, that's proximity. Next one is density. Let's do this. <laughs> and the and the and the opposite of density, which is like space and right. and sometimes called white space, right. right? So, density and white space. I have this link here. This is called Indian Type Foundry. I found this website this week and I was just like, "Oh man, it, it's just so beautiful." So, how do you see space being used here? There's space above and below the main content here, and then even in the navigational elements, they're giving... They're very liberally spaced out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit Which because is this is an interesting uh, layout. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, so we see that there's so much liberal space given above and below, and what that does is it draws the user's focus to one one specific focal point yeah. to read this sentence. They, The designer here thinks that this sentence is super important for me to read. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is I haven't read it yet, and yeah. it keeps on moving. Interaction aside, the designer wants me to understand and feel, maybe even more than read, just to feel this. Right, because this is the a, fonts. Th yeah, it's a type foundry. They're showing us fonts. So this is an opportunity for them to show their work yeah. by just putting some text on a page. If we scroll down the page, what happens to that, what happens to that space? It's replaced by some pretty dense information. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that interesting? This one layout has great example of space and density. Oh, uh, yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Like this one right here, this, this uh, module here, is not just a thumbnail like most of these. This is actually a tweet that you can interact with. So it's super dense again. Whoa. Yeah. I like that, now that you called it out, how it was, there was a lot of white space and then leads to yeah. something that's quite dense. And if you consider like the narrative of someone approaching this layout, 
they are taken from one place and transported into another place, mm -hmm. one complexity to another, right? Yeah. It's, like, it's like watching Teletubbies and ending up with The Revenant. Wow. <laughs> it's starting <laughs> at one place, ending up somewhere completely different. <laughs> and that's intentional, I think. Yeah. And especially look at here as well. That's nice. This is a really cool website, by the yeah. way. I spent some time checking this one out. Okay, uh, density. Next, we're gonna look at texture. Okay. And texture is an interesting thing, and, and even maybe this slide can be a little bit misleading, because you know Travis is talking about texture. So what's what's behind it? It's actually some a picture of a concrete wall or something, which yeah. is high texture. Yeah. But texture does not necessarily or only mean raster images that are of concrete walls. Right. Right. What else could texture be? Hmm. So not only concrete walls, maybe like <laughs> the texture of. <laughs> I don't. I honestly don't know uh, where you're going. With okay, this. sure. Yeah. Let, let me let me not let you let you splash around. Um, there are ways that we can use objects on the page, even if this is like a completely you know air quotes flat design. There's yeah. no raster images in it, right. where you can you can take uh, the design and create texture. Okay, and so I'm, material design would say like the texture of paper. Sure. That's what you're going with. Sure. That's okay. a very specific example. Yeah. I was thinking even more loosely, like like consider a paragraph. Okay. You have a hard left right. and a ragged right. Okay. You're creating texture right, right. with just this text block. Mm -hmm. And you can combine and use these things to create more complex levels of texture. Okay. Let's take a look at an example here. Now, um, this one here is a is a type terms, uh, su supremo.tv slash type terms. This is pretty cool. It takes you through uh, like different elements of typography and kind okay. of defines them and helps you explore uh, what uh, how people use type to build different letter forms. Right. But anyway, <clears throat> when we look at these like little blue, let me see here, little blue elements here, we can see that they're filled in a little bit differently mm -hmm. than the than the white stem of, of this letter before it kind of a a animates out. Right. And it it builds a different type of texture even though it's the same letter form and it's breaking it apart to explain something to you. Cool. It's helping you to identify that this element, this blue element, is different in kind than the white element. Mm. So let's focus on this blue element and define it on right here on the right. Yeah. yeah. Right. This is this is a great example of texture because we're not talking about a photo of a concrete wall. Yeah. yeah. Which is so common, right? Even though they're also using texture on the back. Isn't the that background. funny? <laughs> isn't that isn't that hilarious? <laughs> That's good. I noticed that too. <laughs> it's good. This is a cool website if you want to brush up on your like how to speak about typography, mm. um, specifically uh, letter forms. And I think that's the end of my prezo. Okay, what's next on our? Okay, got it. So that's that is like a, a tour of the toolbox. Mm, Le tour. Le tour. What's what are we? How are we doing on time? Uh, uh, we have one hour. One more hour. All right. You ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it live. <laughs> uh, Teletubbies or Revenant says Dione fifty one. Like me. Using like me using <laughs> like me using Reddit. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I eat websites is asking, where's the camera? Oh, camera. <laughs> camera is not here today. <laughs> oh, so what we're going to do for the rest of this stream is take a look at a layout that's completely lacking okay. in terms of structure and hierarchy. Okay. And we're going to try to take these, you know, eight or nine principles, I never counted, uh, that we discussed Okay. And try to apply them and see how by using turning these knobs, that's a that's a great metaphor, mm -hmm. we can help the user by giving them something much better to look at, much better to use, understand, and take action on. Okay. Okay? So the layout that I prepared that is let me zoom out and find it. Oh, here we are. The layout that I prepared is right here. And it is uh, it's supposed to be a, a website about the, the Fox Theater. I used to live in Oakland, and there's this beautiful, beautiful historic theater downtown, and um, you know they have concerts and and films right. get played there. So we look at this hierarchy here, knowing what we know now, having discussed what we've discussed. That's beautiful. What? <laughs> what, 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 what do you think? Yeah. What do we think here? Um. Well, squint test. Uh, the logo is calling the most attention, and yeah. then the heavy nav. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is a lack of complete hierarchy 
in the font. So it looks like a bunch of gray text. We have a little bit of proximity kind of grouping here, but yeah. nothing too clear. That's right. Nothing tells me what these elements are about or why they're there, what they're right. for. That's right. And then we're, we're and then as we go down, a bunch of pictures. I don't know. Are they interactive? <laughs> you what, know, what, dude. What can I do, do with you, them? Do you know how hard it is? As a trained designer, like to create a bad layout, like like on purpose. That's a I, I can make bad layouts on accident all day long. Yeah, but on purpose. But making, making a bad layout on purpose is pretty hard. It's a great collage you design. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, like how would a novice do a, 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 a like an image carousel? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then you again, again, you kind of just messed up with some alignment here. Yeah. Big box, some some lacking of alignment here, and then I guess we can add some other. Yeah, things. so you, you could look at this two ways. You could think like, okay, this is somebody who tried really hard and just is not good, mm. or you could think like maybe this is a wireframe okay. that that maybe a you know we've been given by a client and they say make make, make this good. Right. You know, here's my idea. Okay. Make this better. So you know, not pointing any fingers. This designer sucks. No. So, uh, what? You have any grid for this? Did you use a grid? I, I prepared um, this here. Yeah. Which is so our, our canvas is a thousand pixels, okay. and I prepared some boxes that equal eight hundred pixels with, I think twenty pixels gutter. Okay. There's four of them, four columns. It's just a really simple, really okay. simple grid. Okay. And you created it yourself. You didn't look it up or anything. What? The grid system here. That you're I just made an 800 pixel wide box, Arbitrary. divided it by, yeah, I was like, oh, let's do some math and divide <laughs> it, like, like if I have 20 pixels times three minus, uh, minus 800 divided by four. Yeah, what I, wanna, what I want to ab abstract from that is yeah. that you can create your own grids, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you don't need to use Bootstrap, guys. Yeah, Bootstrap or 960, I mean, there's some best practices <laughs> there. <laughs> Radic 96 says, 96 says, this is the be best website ever. And then this guy, I hate to say it, Travis, but this side is making my eyes bleed. <laughs> It's okay, Jessica. It will get better. That's the point of this stream. <laughs> she felt. The Jessica felt. The Jessica felt. <laughs> uh, okay, so do you want to talk about Gridmore or are we done there? No, that's all I wanted to say is that when I started to design, I spent a lot of time looking for grids. and Like, what's the best grid to use? There's best practices, yet you can make up your own grid. And, and, and the purpose of a grid is to help you align mm -hmm. uh, elements on a page. And I think... The content is king. The content is what speaks. Thank you so much and for so, saying this. Right, and so the grid is defined by the content that you have. The right. grid serves me. Yeah, not the other way around. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Say it. I'm in charge, not Preach. the grid. Preach. Okay. So uh, we have our, our principles. We yeah. know that we want to insert a lot of hierarchy here, and let's talk about how to do that. Hold on, Karen Gaming. How can we see with bleeding eyes? Squint test. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, IE website says made with Wix. Burn! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me uh, make this grid a little bit shorter. I'm just gonna bring this down so it's not like super big. Okay. Right. Um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna be using this grid and not using this grid at the same time. So when I want to use it, I'll just drop it in and quickly center it and say, okay, is is it within the realms of what I want to do or not? Sure. Okay, so. Let's look at this layout. Talk a little bit about what we could do to improve it. Okay. Um, the first thing about this layout is that we are downplaying the most important thing about uh, this property. Mm -hmm. The Fox Theater is beautiful. Okay. It's a really, really grand. I've taken so many pictures of it just walking down the street whenever I'm in Oakland. So we have this video, uh, this photo, and it's cropped. Uh, let's bump up the opacity a little bit, all, all the way. <laughs> And um, get rid of these things so we can just look at what we're seeing here. Look at what we're seeing. Okay. So Travis is using XD, so he'll be working through it, maybe not explaining as much. And then at 5, after our stream in about 40 minutes, 50 minutes. Um, our the, stream goes to 5? No, no, no. At 5, the XD, uh, the XD team will come. Ours goes to 3. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, if you guys want me to, to be more practical about like what to click with the shortcuts are, we can do that as well. Um, but I think XD, the product team, when they come in, they're going to be talking about features. Right. So, okay. Okay. I don't know how. I don't really know how their stream is going to go, but uh, I can I can be a little bit more explicit about what I'm pressing here. Sure, sure. Let's do that. Okay. So uh, if you if you are clicking on an image and you click any or hit any of the number buttons, it it, it jumps to that opacity, opacity multiplied by ten. Mm -hmm. Right. So 100% is hitting zero. Mm -hmm. 
hit, you hit the number five, it turns to 50% opacity. Got it. All right. Um, let's start with the, the ultimate ne uh, hierarchy on most web pages, which is the navigation. The main navigation, mm -hmm. because pages can have secondary and tertiary navigations. Very good point. If need be. So what is the purpose of a navigation? The goal of a navigation is to create a mental model by which you can wayfind your, your, your journey on a web page. Yeah, like, right. It, it tells you not only how to get somewhere, if you need to go there, but where you are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And okay. what, what are the, what's around us? Right? That's right. Gives you the hundred yard view. That's okay, right. so obviously this navigation is super huge. Let's let's bump that down. Uh, let's try 18 pixels. And let's put it kind of like at the top here. Okay. We can use this scrim here. A and scrim, eh? A s scrim. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know what that word is. Mm. If you're gonna say, Travis, what's a scrim? I couldn't tell you. Travis, good thing I'm not asking you what a scrim is. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what I think it is, but I don't know the exact <laughs> definition. So I'm gonna hit command bracket that way. And it's going to move the element uh, forward or backward in okay. the in the composition. And if I hit Command Shift that way or that way, it's going to move it to the front or to the back. Okay, cool. Shortcut to the back, to the front. Okay, sorry. Right. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I did that. <laughs> uh, let me just knock this scrim down a little bit. Here we're at twenty percent by hitting the key two. And I'll take this this navigation and increase the contrast. Like now that it gets gray on gray, it's looking a little muddy. So why don't I define it as completely black? Okay. All right. What else can I do to make this type stand out a little bit? I will retype it in caps, not with a Q. <laughs> now, why are you deciding to go with caps? Well, I mean, I can't type and talk. Mm, you can try. Everybody who watches my YouTube channel knows that I can't <laughs> type and talk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, so the question is, why am I using all caps to type this navigation? Well, um, mostly because what we're doing is we're building contrast through difference. Mm -hmm. So I want to tease apart. This is a special type of type. Okay. <laughs> special type of type. Mm. It is unique in that these are wayfinding systems. This is a navigation. Okay. Uh, a headline, a, a copy, um, some statistics or metadata is not navigation. Right. So what can I do to some nav? to make it stand out, and uh, in our case, not too much, because we don't want it to be as big as it used to be. Right. So, that, so we're, we're playing with these knobs. I'm scaling it down, but I'm turning up the volume in terms of making it all caps. I also turn up the volume by turning it black. I don't think that's a great decision. Let me turn it white and see what we have. Also interesting. Maybe I need a little bit more opacity here. There the, you go. Yeah, what are we at, 30%? 30%. That's good. So uh, this, this block here is 100 pixels tall. I think that's fine. Um, I would make it a little shorter normally, except for I have this weird shaped logo that does not necessarily fit inside the box. Okay. But making it 100 pixels tall will allow me to have like this overlay and create a, a visible, a visual tangent. Yeah. What do I mean by visual tangent? Uh, that it is part of the nav. Yeah, it, um, it's like yet not huh. not like an image in the background or anything it's like it's superimposed mm -hmm. and it's relating to when when two distinct elements impact each other right mm -hmm. here you have a you create interest mm -hmm. it's kind of like in photography of the rule of thirds right like the interests points are here and if you can align elements there and better yet intersecting elements there it's going to create a lot of visual interest and that's what kind of what we're doing here right. let's do a gut check with our grid drag our grid on and center it Center. Okay, I'm seeing that like my, my navigation could just jump in a little bit and my logo could jump in a little bit too. And this is going to help us have balance throughout our whole page. Okay. Not not only in aligning things vertically, but just making it feel a little bit more comfortable to look at. Yeah. Have you ever been to a, a, a website that's like optimized for like widescreen or something? Yeah. And what it really means is that you're reading for three hours and then you get the next line? Yeah. So like that's not optimized for a big screen, in my opinion. That's the yeah. exact opposite. That's right. And so even though we have a thousand pixels to use here, let me bump this up a little bit. Let me four. Even though we have a thousand pixels to use here, it doesn't mean that our our layout, our content of the layout, needs to be a thousand pixels. But we're allowing the image to be full bleed to still get the emotional impact of our format. Right. It's cool. I like it. Um. Historic so, Fox Theater. So you have this. 
white font on top of the image and, and it's hard to read. Right. I have a secret. And then I'm also going to tell you this. <laughs> this I see it. This is another scrim. This is a this is a an a, 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 a gradient going from pure black to fully uh, transparent. Yeah. And right now it's at 30%. So I can knock this up a little bit more and then put it on top of, of this image. Oh, nice. And then when I push it back into the right order, it'll help that text to pop out a little bit. Mm. I'm going to land it to the bottom here. Okay. Um, That's cool. What should I do with this text? How important is this? Well, it's important. You, you need to explain what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. right? If this image is there, why not use the space? And First thing I do is align it. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it was like... Wah. And there's, there's something interesting here is that right now you have this uh, asymmetry of this text here and the text up here for navigation. Mm -hmm. um, and they're equal in weight, thus equal in importance. And so if this is more important, we should... Yeah, what's the, what's the uh, 18? This is 20... Let me bring this actually down a little bit. 16. There you go. 16. Nice cool. And do you want better? I'll bump that up. Oh, look at that. I wish I could rap. I was like, I'll bump that up, and something would come after that. <laughs> um, I'm just like, I have no rap skills, but I want them bad. <laughs> I'm listening to the Macklemore, and I'm like, I, yeah. do, I do that thing where I move my hips. I'm like, yeah, you move the hips. <laughs> uh, Sidetrack. Okay, so... Let me uh, create a little bit more contrast with this type here by, um, sorry, with this type here by varying the, because like, like deducing and parsing the, the text, we can see that there's actually two kinds of content here. There's what the theater title is right here. The what? Uh-huh. And the where. And the where. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's create more contrast there. Um, let's do light italic for that one and take the size down a little bit about to let's do 30 and then this guy Boom. oops i un 30 it how did how did i un 30 it <laughs> do you ever un 30 things and just regret it immediately <laughs> my un 30 happened i un 30 <laughs> uh, okay so the fox theory you know what's, what's interesting about this title is <laughs> it's so large, and I'll make it even larger. It's so large that it does no longer need to be heavy. Mm -hmm. So it can still retain the impact, um, the, the authority in the organization, in other words, the hierarchy, if we uh, lighten up the, the typeface a little bit because it's so large and placed upon a, such a prominent image, which is the, the Fox Theater. Yeah, and what's, what's, what's cool is the same, the inverse is also true for Hit the, nav the main navigation is that because it is in all caps, you can keep it at, at the, the 16 pixels that you have it or, or the, the font size. Right. Yeah, we're, we're using different methods to, like, like what we're doing is increasing or decreasing contrast. Right. Affecting the authority of that element in the organization and constructing a hierarchy. Right. right? That is the, that is the, oh, that's all we're doing. Yeah. And we're just, Using these little just tools. Tuning. Yeah, exactly. Can you show? Here, here's another one. Can you what? show history and, and not, not don't make history all caps. Just type in history. You don't have to delete it. Just yeah. Delete it. Are you talking about this? Yeah. Just go. Uh, oh, it's all caps. So if you notice, history versus the all caps starts to lose its prominence as a as a navigational element as well. Mm -hmm. It's smaller. Mm -hmm. And I was I was going to do this before you pointed that out. Um, I'm going to take the tracking. And bump that up a little bit. Nice. A little bit more breathing room. Mm -hmm. Makes it a little bit more elegant, mm -hmm. a little bit more uh, authoritative, right. if you will. Right. And okay. then what you, could, what, what you could also do is you need to let the person know that's visiting the site what page are they on. Right. Great. So I'm just going to throw an underline under this one. I'm going to go to these, these tools up here. If you want to be good at these layout programs, get good at... Um, using these little little value value constraints up here because they will not only help you to um, quickly move around the page and get things perfect, but also they're going to let you be very precise. Mm -hmm. That's just a tip for you guys. Um, see, that was too wide. There we go. Perfect. Now, that, that simple under, underline on, you know, it lets, it lets you know not only um, 
what is available to you in the navigation, but where are you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, and it also, it, it sets up a pattern because down here, we have another option to do, let me move this down a little bit. We have another option to do um, a sub navigation. I didn't even know. Yeah, I mean, cause there's no hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> so let me grab all this stuff, bump it down a bit, grab our pink and center, check ourselves here. Okay, so move this to the back. So let me check out this uh, navigation. I'm gonna line it, align it to the top here, and then I'm gonna bump it down one, two, three, four, five, five pixels. Uh, okay. Sorry, 50 pixels. Okay. So I was hitting shift to constrain. Is it 50? You can check with alt now. What? Press and hold alt. Alt? And then hover over uh, right here. Well, select, you gotta select your thing and then hover. Son of a, that's cool. <laughs> so like, you select an element and then alt over other things and it tells you how it gives, far it, it is relation. from that. Yeah, but I think that was updated yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, it's 50. Yeah, so there you go. What's cool about that is it, it allows UI design to I'm be quicker. I'm gonna do 40. Wait, wait, double check that. I'm gonna double check it. Oh, I'm like, how do I double check? <laughs> this is a cool feature. How did you know that? Uh, I read through the... Somebody said it here? No, no, I read through the uh, release notes. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. uh, can you answer the question from Resource? Resource asks, is Adobe XD more of a prototyping tool rather than something you can use and then export and just tweak for the web? It is both. Adobe XD is a lay UI layout tool which has the built-in functionality of prototyping, right? So you can think of mm, like a, a, a similar workflow as using Sketch and then getting your comps into an Envision app and then prototyping that way or using Flinto. What Adobe XD does, it's a UI design tool that allows you to prototype from within and then you can export assets, etc. You can also share your prototyping tool with your peers or the prototype with your peers. So it's it's both right now. Yeah. All right. So what I did is I, I just looked at this and mirrored the, a lot of the styles, okay. being all caps, the size, the weight, the uh, the tracking, everything, because I, I want it to feel like a navigation. Mm -hmm. And since we've already set the expectation of what navigations are like up, up above, we can just copy that pattern down here. So I'm gonna erase the old one and move it in. One, two, three, four. Nice. Alt, click, ah, that's 40. <laughs> okay, cool. And then uh, I'll grab this this bar here and put it down. Let me control what we got here. I'm gonna turn it all black, knock it down 50. Then, oh, does this one have a border? Boo. Oh, that's too big now that the border's gone. One, two. Oh, because there's okay. an inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I got this one, and I want to control the weight of it by saying, what was it, 50? No. So another question from Quid Quam, Five. Uh was curious about the shareable prototypes, whether you can easily collect feedback on them. Like uh, a, uh, like if there's comment embedded and stuff in yeah, it? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Hey, Michael, uh, when somebody shares an Adobe XD prototype, can Los comment on it? Like log in and comment on it? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> the yet is very... The yet is... Uh, I don't know how accurate the yet is. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is the yet important? What's happening? Is it coming soon? That'd be really cool. So XD is something that launched and there's a, a great velocity of, of how they're adding more, more and more value to UI. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I, was tweeting, I was tweeting to the PMs and I was like, I was like, around the 20th of the month, I get pumped. Because <laughs> they're releasing every yeah. month at the, around the 20th, a little before or, or after that. Yeah. And uh, there's like a new thing. Like like today, I was so excited that I can change the, the color of the, the type. Oh, yeah. I'll, show you, I'll show you what I mean. Right, Be so not before today, what, go ahead. Everything was black before, right? So if it was 400 seats, you couldn't make 450 black, right? Yeah, like so if I, I would just go to this, the whole thing changes black. Right. But today, I can go in and say like, this is going to be now red. That that's a new thing, and it's 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 kind of funny because, you know, Adobe XD is is prototype software. They're building it with us as the community. Mm -hmm. They're not taking a year or two to build it in quiet and then release it to a big reveal. They're saying like, what's important to you guys? Give us feedback, and so it makes it. There's this interesting dynamic that sometimes it could be like, I just want to change the color of my type, <laughs> please, and then it like finally comes, and you're like friends again. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's funny because it, it you know the uh, the other the other route is that 
we would just never know or have no input at all into That's the right. development of the tool and just hope that they get it right the first time. Right. So this is iteration in public. All right, so we have these uh, these four elements and these are kind of like property values, like, like definitions of facts or features about the property. Um, so this is about the venue. Yeah, so here's a, here's a headline called About the well, Fox Theater. You look at that. <laughs> so let's define the headline right quick okay. before we jump into these definitions. Real, real quick. Um, I'm going to bump the, tech, the type up to 24, mm -hmm. and maybe this time instead of making the, the, the text gray or black, I'm going to sample the color from the logo. Mm, look at that. Now, it's a, little bit, it's a little bit too rich, and I'm going to bump it down a little bit, mostly because I want it to appear the same. Not, there, there, sometimes there's a difference between things looking the same appearing the same and actually being the same. Right, so an example of that is when you're aligning, let's say, uh, an icon and some text. Okay. Right? And you want to center on a center that on a page, you have... The age-old align the icon with text. That's right, you uh -huh. have, if you do symmetrically in the center, it is by default or by, by its code and its nature in the center. Yet it doesn't appear to be centered, mm -hmm. and so you have to nudge it. It's what we call awesome. visually aligned. Visually aligned versus I don't know what the word is. Uh, what is it? Metrically aligned. Ooh. Mm, I made words, that up. Words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what, what am I doing here? What is? Why is that important? So there's this idea of uh, the like an appropriate line measure mm -hmm. that aids in when you're reading text. So for example, if you go to, um, I don't know if Wikipedia does this. Um, where if you go full width and you have a paragraph, it's you're gonna read from the entire yeah. screen and you're gonna lose you're gonna lose your spot while you're reading. Right. right. So it aids in is that readability or legibility? Readability. 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 Yeah, it's called a typographic measure. Mm -hmm. Generally, you want it to be between eight and ten words, or maybe around eighty characters. Okay. Um, I'm just I'm just kind of like. Uh, eyeballing it right here, right. but lucky for me, we have this grid. So this comes into play here, I'll put this grid on, grab my type, and kind of bring it out to the third column. Nice. And I'll use this fourth column, I'll send this to the back, i use this fourth column for these uh, factoids right here. Okay. Factoids. Factoids, that's the technical term. <laughs> and I'll line them to the grid right there. Let me get rid of my grid again. I don't need you, grid. I don't need you. I don't love you, <laughs> just use you. <laughs> uh, let's bring this fill to, let's say, 999. 999. Classic 99999. <laughs> and I'll make everything type. Yeah, 20 is good. And make everything 9999. 999. So, question from Re Sorza. Uh, will these episodes with Los and Trav, <laughs> I got called out first, be uploaded to YouTube like ASAP? Uh, they will. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no comment on the timing because that involves a lot of people other than just me. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but I do believe we plan that we are going to upload them. That's right. That's right. Um, so I'm gonna again. I'm gonna actually grab the color from Hyun. Oh, you know what might be cool? Yeah. Is grab not the red but this gold. Ooh, Ooh. It's, it's regal. I like it. <laughs> so let's. What was the hex? I can grab the hex pretty quickly from you, the color. You know picker. what's nice about this is it mirrors the color of the theater, the brick. Ah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, that is the color that they're using. See, when they built this logo. This is the logo of the theater. Well, you yeah, look I, at that. I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Let me bump up this type here to let's say 50, just try it out. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, because I'm moving the type up so large, the strokes become heavier. Mm -hmm. And I wanna dial back the, the impact that it has on the layout. Right. So I don't, I don't wanna make these things the most important thing in the hierarchy. Yeah. So I wanna use the tools that I have, color, size, weight. I'm gonna move the, the weight down just a little bit. Now it looks like a feature instead of the, the, the content itself. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. This type is a little, a little tight. Go to 20, 30, 25. A lot of this is just eyeballing and I could do better than that. Well, if you hold alt. What? What? You, There's more alt stuff? No, no. Just when you hold alt and you're, you're like ding, when, ding, when you align them or something. Oh, I was talking about the letting. Oh, I missed it. The line height. I was just nudging the line height to see what I thought was good. Got it, got it. But if I had 
a real good typographic grid that included like baseline rhythms, mm -hmm. then I would rely on that. Okay. You know, like like I would want this baseline to kind of match up here and like look 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 well with these mm -hmm. guys and stuff. But I'm not being that bothered right now. I'm just I'm just kind of making I'm I'm working for impact. Right. Uh, can we have 420 seats instead? <laughs> Holla. <laughs> um, it's not my stream. I don't care. <laughs> All right. So what do we do? Let's write this down. 50 light gold and 25 letting. Okay. You know what I tend to do when, when working? You have a secret? Thing? I just take a screenshot and then I bring the screenshot as an image on top. Let's do it. So uh, take a screenshot of this. Yeah. Oh, right, the, the 420 right here because yeah. I was like, well, I was like, where did my light go? Okay, take a screenshot of this and then... And then, um, I, and then wherever it is... So I, for, no, I, I do full screen when I have a laptop, it's yeah. a small thing, so it's hard for me to drag on. So I do Command, Shift, I, and it's easy to look at my desktop. Okay, cool. The screenshot is just right there. And then I bring it in. So I'll import it. I have no idea where it went. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's centered on my artboard, but I have a long artboard, so it, it got lost. All right, and then you can have that visual reference? Yep. Okay, that's cool. That's right. um, and then these are all the right color, right? 999. There's a, there's a few quick hex colors that I use in terms of grayscale. Uh, 333 is, good, is a nice hard black, uh, but not too hard. Yeah. Uh, 666, 666 yeah. is a good medium gray. Yeah. It's great for body text. 999 is for muted text. Yes. Yeah. And you know, CCC is great for like, yeah, really muted text. And like the the principle behind that is that it's hard for in you're, you're setting up a scale. Yeah, and in real life, it's hard to find like a, a pure black, like as you're walking around. Yeah, yeah. Right, and so we want to mimic that. That's why it's it's really hard. Oh, that's why you do three 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 instead of zero zero zero. Right, because mm. in real life, it's hard to find pure black colors. Right, they're usually like. A, a, like a, a lighter version of it, etc. Oh, that's interesting. I never thought about it that way. Um, another thing you can do here is one, once you get going with with this, is mm -hmm. I think you can turn this into a grid and do a repeat grid. Oh, snip, snip. I, I guess I could. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, try Let, that. let's get. I want to keep the content. Just, of it, but just was, in case. Uh, yes, thing. So I'll just I'll just select this uh, 420 seats. I'll click repeat grid. Pull down the grid here to there's four elements because there's four elements that I want. And um, move these, move these ones kind of off the screen. Right. Close up my box here, and then decide what do I want the difference between each element to be. Let Let's go to, what was this, forty? Okay, let's say forty. Okay. And why are we using forty and not fifty? The reason is because we're we're creating. We talked about repetition. Mm -hmm. Built into the idea of repetition is rhythm. Yeah. And uh, rhythm is such a powerful thing that's not necessarily expressed outwardly, but we but we but we understand things very um, uh, very deeply when mm -hmm. it comes to like rhythm and stuff like that. So, uh, so now we have to retype stuff. Darn it! Oh, caps lock. All right, you want to answer questions while I'm typing? Yeah. So, uh, talking about black and how you barely ever see that in nature. Whoa, that's a nifty tool, repeat grid. I think so, that's pretty cool. Oh, totally. And then what program is this from Underwater Shark? Um, and is it new? Underwater Shark? With uh, the E's or threes. You talking <laughs> <laughs> This is Adobe XD. Um, this is, how long, how long has it been out now? Four months, I think. Officially. Oh, wait, it's in March. Yeah. March. Yeah, we got this trim in March. So four months, uh, Adobe XD, Adobe Experience Design. That's right. No more questions. I want to thank everybody for showing up and, and hanging out with us while yeah. we're doing these streams. It, it really mean, it really makes makes the experience when we have you here. Yeah. So um, I've I've used the repeat grid to place the boxes, and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, oh, I actually want this one here to be above. It's really simple to not be con. Like, like just like how we talked about the grid. Like I don't want the grid to control me. Right. I don't want this repeat grid to control me. I don't need you. I'm in charge. <laughs> so I'll just break this repeat grid. I'll just undo it. Now one showed up at the end because it was getting ready to repeat more. But you just delete it. Right. So I'm gonna take this uh, and put it up here to the 421 and grab that 420 and move it. Oops. Grab the 420 and move it down. Down. 
Yeah. And then I'll grab all of them and do uh, this thing, which is distribute. And then now I'll just quickly and easily okay, switch cool. them. Because I was thinking, like, in terms of content, you know, maybe even this one would be better down here as well. Right, because the seats in the luxury box are related yeah. to each other. I just made this stuff up anyway. Hmm. I don't even know if it has a luxury box. Mm. Get rid of these. Okay, now let's... Uh, so talk so, to me about this alignment. Where are you aligning that 1983? I, I was going to show you this feature of XD right here. See that dotted line? Yeah. That is the, the, the fold of the page. Oh, wow. It's interesting, huh? Wow. Yeah. Okay, so where am I aligning these? Well, we have one alignment. I align the text box to the top of the title text box. Mm -hmm. But what that does is it's it's using proximity, I would say, inefficiently. Mm -hmm. And it's elevating these factoids above the title about Fox Theater. Right. But they should belong to it, not be a sibling of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use proximity to kind of knock them down. I'm going to align these things to that box. Now, this is a, a box. Go explaining about the Fox Theater. And this type is 20. I'm gonna knock it down to 16. I'm gonna knock it down to 18, there we go. Okay. That's a little bit better. And I'm gonna increase the letting to make it easier to read. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. So, uh, let's see what we got here. Don't How are we anymore? doing? How are we doing? Oh, oh we're good. I man. think we have some space up here that we need to address. Okay, let me group these things so it's just one unit easier to mess around okay. with. And then we need to consider the space between this nav, this sub nav, and this content block. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to move it up to the content block and start moving it down. Uh, whatever I think would be good. 50 might be good. How about 100? Oh. And what's interesting about 100 is that I have this dimension here, which is a 100, right? Right. So it, it kind of, again, we're calling back dimensions that we've seen before. We're establishing a little bit more of a rhythm. And, um, and we I can, like that. do you like it? <laughs> I'm glad that you like it. We're squinting. We're squinting we're, on this. <laughs> my eyes are not yeah, bleeding. You know, yeah, did you guys, you know, on the feed notice that we both kind of laid back <laughs> and look like this? Like, like this, if you ever see a designer looking like this, that doesn't mean because they're chilling. <laughs> they're squinting. <laughs> uh, that's real life. That's, <laughs> this is real life. <laughs> All righty. I'm noticing that I'm breaking the grid right here with these numbers. What do you think about that? I think we should change how big the theater is. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's only 220 square feet. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you do. If, if real life doesn't conform to your grid, then change real life. <laughs> actually, actually, looking at it again, I noticed that these things are just not aligned to the grid. Yeah. See this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, man. so let's grab these elements and group them. Well, they're already aligned vertically to this box, so let's just move them into the grid here. here now, I'm seeing something that's disturbing me. Mm, it's too close. It's too close, it's right? Too close. My my column, my grid column is. I have so much space up here. Anxiety. Ah, what do I do? <laughs> it, you know, like you can, like how we talked about aligning things, uh, like the icon to text. Sometimes you have to do a visual check, yeah. and even though even though the math is right, even though it's perfect for my grid, I would add some padding right here, bring it in. Right. What was it, like twenty or forty pixels, whatever. Try to try to find some try to find a good reason for how much you're bringing it in. Yeah. The point is, you do need some space, and your your gut check tells you that your squint test. We'll, we'll show you that. Right. Right. Uh, it's like GTA kind of <laughs> gangster style kind of design. Huh. That's from Darko. Hey, there was a question earlier about grids and how you keep bringing in this uh, this grid onto your screen. Yeah. Is that because XD doesn't currently have its own grid system? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, when you're when you're using beta software, you you have to understand that it's beta software and find ways to accommodate it. Mm -hmm. Uh, one one example is that I'm, I've made my own grid. It wasn't hard. I'm not crying. No. I'm not going to write my mom and say that they're mean to me, but <laughs> I am going to find a way around it. And you know, like this is, this is typical of what design is. Mm -hmm. Design is about being scrappy, about solving problems, about understanding what you have, what tools you have, right. to create solutions. Right. And so, if I understand my tools, I can quickly create a grid. It's easy. Right. Uh, here's another interesting comment is what about designing for people with low vision from Bobby World Net? And so I think what 
he is referring oh, to is I thought you said I thought I thought Bobby World was a place. No. Like what about people with low vision from Bobby World? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never been to Bobby squint, World. I don't know. Squint that. <laughs> no. That's great. Yeah, so, there's a lot of tests. Go ahead. So he's talking about accessibility, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of tests that you can do um, and the more you practice, the more you understand. And so from the get-go, you can be more accessible when you design. From the get-go. From the get-go. From the get-go. And so what you can do is, after the fact, after you've designed, is you can do an accessibility check and see how your colors are doing. Yeah. It's something that, that can be visible, et cetera. Yeah. And this is something that you increase in... Um, like domain knowledge as you use it. Mm -hmm. So those accessibility checks that Los talked about, they're not just good for making sure this design is good, but they're good for putting you in the habit and the posture of understanding what good accessibility is. That's right. So using tools like like maybe, hey, that that's a great question. Um, why don't we just bump up the contrast and make this text a little bit, you know, a little bit better to, to, to read. Mm -hmm. Now it's gonna be easier for people with a little bit more vision problems. That's right. And um, I didn't do any science on there. <laughs> I just tried to use, <laughs> just try to use my, my thinking skill. Uh, that's funny. All right, so you have this beautiful collage that you tried to undesign. It still looks good. It still looks good. This is intentional, guys. This is yeah. the best design I could do. <laughs> I'm going to bring this grid in here, and I don't know what to do with this collage, so I'm just going to ignore it. it it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like when you were in like grade school. And like, you know, there's a test, you don't know the answer to that question, so just skip it and keep on going. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna do right now. All right, you do that. For no other reason than I just don't know what to do to impress you guys. <laughs> All right, so World Class Acts. I, I repeated this same headline up here. Again, we're, we're using repetition to build familiarity and comfort with what we're doing. And then uh, I'm just gonna, since this is just Lorem, I'm gonna copy it from here. Hey Travis, who's Lorem? You don't know Lorem? I know Lorem. What's up, Ipsum? Ipsum? And how far did I think it was 20 pixels. Wait, I can alt, alt, alt. And then you gotta hover. It's hard for me to say alt because it's option. option. Yeah, okay. It's alt option. It's alt option. Hierarchy, look, alt option. But option is. Uh, it's option. Mm, it is option. All right. All right, so I need 20 pixels from the title here. One, two. <laughs> Sup, Lorem? Sup, Lorem? <laughs> All right, um, so we've got some description of what kind of acts we have here at the, at the theater. We have world-class acts. Now let's, so <laughs> I, I took care of this copy here because it was stressing me out that it was like so crazy. Right. And I, I feel like I need some organized room to address this, Okay. right? Okay. So I just quickly like got that. You're making room. Way. You're making room. Just making room, like I'm about to dance. All right. I'm making room, people. I'm gonna do the worm. <laughs> uh, what would, what would you do? What do I do? Yeah. Mm. Do you want to take over for a bit? Sure. All right. Los, this is a team team design. Los is driving now. Oh, snap. Okay. We get to design. I'll just be hanging out with my buddies in the chat room. Okay. Sounds good. Video editing says Fitzpatrick is my arch nemesis. Uh, background car loop. There's a, is there a car behind us? There's a car behind us. What? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there's a car behind us. <laughs> mm, that's funny. Uh, thanks, Fubrook. Let us know that the... Uh, lock this. Was it locked? No, I don't want to lock that one. Oh, move the grid to the back so you can touch the things on top of it. Send it back. Thank you. Oh, we only have 20 minutes left. All right, let me do this real quick. Um, 78, 80, 90. <laughs> uh, Jordy Sand says, hey Travis, you always look so comfy, where do you get your sweatshirts? I <laughs> Asking me about fashion is like a, like kind of a bad way to go about your life. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna end up in the wrong place. Um, I, I, all of my clothes are hand-me-downs or freebies. Nice. <laughs> like check this out, like this shirt I got at a meetup, it was a dribble meetup. This jacket is a, a given to me at Google. These shoes, my wife bought them for me. I have, no, I was not there. And the same with these pants. I wasn't there. <laughs> I just came home and there they were. So, 
here. That's fashion. Yeah. And now that <laughs> this is this is how fashion works, guys. <laughs> now I'm wearing them. <laughs> the height of the height of Silicon Valley fashion is to wear the sweater you got at work. Um, okay. And who gaming says I struggle more with my assets for UX design. How do you determine how many base assets to start with? I don't know how the UX will develop with more content. I'm trying to understand the question. Base assets. Well, <clears throat> have have you heard of the uh, style tiles? Have you heard of these things? No. What is that? Okay. Um, do a quick Google search for style tiles. These are an interesting thing to to kind of use. They're they're just another tool. And the idea there is that what you're going to do is this exercise to help you define basically the style guide of your design before you actually put a design together. Okay. So you would do an exploration of typography. What is my headline going to be? What colors am I going to use? What are some inspirations? Kind of like a mood board, but a little bit more explicit about style. Right. And um, that's one way to do it. And if you're talking about like the specific photographs you're going to use, like for example, I went and did a quick search for you know, the Oakland um, Fox Theater and just found all these and Los is just placing them in. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kern Gaming brings up a really great point to address the question. He says, um, the minimum to get the point across, that's the exact number of assets that you should be using. The right amount. <laughs> you should be using the right How amount of assets. How many should you use the right amount? <laughs> You get these images because I like them. <laughs> uh, H- Hoagie Essek says, "When I Google Carlos Montoya, I find a Spanish flamenco, flamenco guitarist." <laughs> That's right. That's right. You Google that again. I cannot get his his SEO game is on point. It's <laughs> a flamenco SEO game. <laughs> He's been dead for a while too. Oh, he's really good. What a way to zap the mood. Oh, I'm sorry. Got hit by a bus. It was a flamenco <laughs> bus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Full of flamenco uh, guitarists. That's really funny. Uh, flamenco bus. Even if the wait a I love style tiles. Okay, so this is uh, D. Evan says I love style tiles. Style tiles. I don't start a design without one. Even if the client doesn't want it, I still do it in secret. Ooh, secret. Mm. Um, bring out your dad. <laughs> Whose name is Carlos Montoya? No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, that's a uh, that's a, a Monty Python. Uh, bring out your anyway. Um, says when did this start? This started at one o'clock. It'll be over at three. It's so another fifteen minutes. Um, so Carlos is building a, an interesting grid here, and he's got some uh, some repeating shapes. So I'm seeing a lot of um, rhythm and like a repetition, and we also have um, a very a very um, what, am, what, what am I trying to say? I don't know. It's your mind, man. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to say like a, a very deliberate grid. So where we where we first started off with like this like kind of like mosaic. Right. You're you're opting for a, a very specific structure, yeah. and we have we have big and small, you know, like thick and thin strokes, if you will, right. uh, for these images. And um, I don't. If I was a user looking at at this, I wouldn't interpret it as you know necessarily meaningful, other than the curator of the images might want to place the most beautiful or impactful ones in the larger squares. Right. But um, but yeah, I, I think it works pretty well. Would you imagine there's going to be inter- in any interactivity with yeah, these? Yeah, I see this as like there's more information to be had here about it. Don't like that. Okay. Whatever, it's fine. So. Um, we have a, what are your thoughts on good or bad using sites like Wix or Squarespace? I think it's fine. So the, the goal of Wix and Squarespace is to Inigo Montoya. You're kidding my father. (laughs) (laughs) My name is Inigo Montoya. All right, I'm done with that. (laughs) Uh, The point, the point of um, of Wix, Squarespace, and any of those preset is to bring to light the accessibility of like responsiveness and and a clean template for people that don't have the access to custom design, right? So it's it's very accessible to people to have a presence online, which is if you're a small business. Uh, a photographer, a curator, yeah. what have you, it's solving that need. It certainly is. And the job of any business is to solve a need for their customers. So they're That's doing right. a good job. Okay. Um, all I can think of is Enigma, or uh, Princess Bride. <laughs> so a question here from Sam Wobb. Who's Los here with tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow I'm here with a peer of mine at Atlassian. Her name is Kelly Griggs. And she is a senior UX designer. And tomorrow Ooh. we're going to jump more into the the research and the the UX thinking behind how we solve 
for, and improve a current experience for, an, for a well-known app. And I'll open loop you and you'll find out tomorrow. Oh snap, you got open looped. Yeah, open looped. Uh, question, what program are we using right now? This program is Adobe Experience that was from Design. That was from TK Ambird 21 uh, Jessica Felt says, anything Squarespace, Wix, nothing. <laughs> she does like a, a, a greater than, lesser than. <clears throat> uh, comments are going pretty quickly here. XD is a comment. Okay. Uh, yes, Adobe XD is the name of the application. That was um, bringing out your dad mentioned that. And Jordi Sands explains that it stands for experience design. And XD is a common abbreviation in the industry. Mm-hmm. That's right. Jordy Sands, I'm hoping I'm saying your name right, Say Ends, uh, says that everybody should listen to the podcast Late Nights with Chavin Lewis. How have we not been pushing the podcast this whole time? <laughs> here, here we are. This is this is basically wait, an episode. Wait, wait. Do we have that a sticker? sticker? That sticker. Yeah, there you go. This is, an, this is a midday episode of, <laughs> of Middays with Travin Lowe's. Midday with Travin Lowe's. We have Late Nights with Travin Lowe's right there. You can go to travinlowe's.com for our entire yeah. archive of, of episodes. And then we have an Instagram that I want to push you to. Instagram.com forward slash Travin Lowe's. Yeah. Lowe's is documenting. <laughs> are you doing on our Instagram? Documenting uh, this whole thing? Yeah. MySpace. My we, space. Got <laughs> we got it all. So for a, for a bunch of like background clips of our time here at Adobe and like we're actually going to go to dinner and hang out with these guys later on, uh, check out our check out our uh, MySpace page. <laughs> we don't have a MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> check out our Instagram. Los is documenting kind of kind of vlogging style. It's it's a lot, it's been really good so far. Yeah. Um, Jordy Sands, give your ele- elevator pitch for the af- for the podcast. So the this is Carlos. My name is Travis. And if you guys are not familiar with us already. Uh, we're both uh, designers here at, at uh, startups. I work at Google, and he works at um, Atlassian. Mm-hmm. And every week on Tuesday morning, we publish a podcast called Late Nights with Travel, Trav and Los. And uh, we talk about design. We talk about um, the, uh, the business of design. We talk about the business of staying healthy as a designer, how to be, how to be good, how to be creative, how to remain that way over time as a, as a professional. Yep. A lot of good stuff. Um, how Sam Wab asks, how different is UX for an app application? Let me start that again. Sorry, Sam Wab. How different is UX for an application for a user compared to UX on a website to push sales or leads? Okay, so I, let me let me parse that. Sam is asking if you're designing an app, Facebook, Twitter, whatever we looked at already, versus designing a sales page or a um, or a landing page. How is the UX different? So, the, it's the UX between a sales page and a what? Uh, like an application. So an app and a sales page. Yeah. So, so the goals are of a web page are beard Siamese brothers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got to attach to our beards. Sorry. So the goal of a web page, when it comes to, well, it depends on what web page it is. The web page is usually so the a, top a, of the a sales funnel. page. Let's talk about that pencil. Okay. When we saw earlier. So earlier, the if UX you, in that compared to Gmail. Okay, cool. So the UX of the paper by 53 uh, pe- uh, pencil, whatever they call mm-hmm. it, is they're trying to get you to get an emotional connection with their product and then get you quickly to buy it, right? Because it's an, it's an emotional purchase, maybe not based on logic, because yep. you could have a stylus that's already working, right? Sure. And so that's the goal for that. And then when it comes to Gmail, the goal of Gmail is to give you access to your content, your, the, the people that are trying to communicate with you uh, in the most simplest and clear path possible, mm-hmm. right? So that you can respond and, and so that you can have success when you communicate with others, right? Right. Anyway. Kern Gaming yeah. says, just to add to what you just said, Kern Gaming says, application is to make it usable. Uh, a sales page is to funnel people into the buy and trust. Uh, sorry, funnel people into buy and trust in a really in a really quick move. Mm-hmm. Um, D. Evan asks, "Do you design sandwiches?" Oh, I design some legit <laughs> sandwiches. I'm gonna tell you. We throw down on the sandwich game. Mm. Let me tell you this one. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had a Cuban sandwich? I have. Awesome. Some some yellow mustard, mm. some pork. So good. Oh my gosh. All right, I think I'm done with this. That's a pretty good uh, uh, grid of images. Mm. 
What time is what's our time check here? It's two fifty four. We oh. have four five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So let let's take an uh, oh we took should have took a screenshot of what it used to be. I should have duplicated mm. and then and then changed. But we can see here by just applying the principles that we talked about, spacing things out, deciding on how things rank in our hierarchy. One thing that I like to do sometimes in when I'm deciding on hierarchies is I'll go through my content, not my design, I'll go through my content, you know, headline, navigation, uh, body copy, metadata, and I will number them. Okay. Yeah, assign, an, assign the, the headline a number. The yeah. logo should be one. The navigation should be two. Assign them numbers. And then you have a key. Okay. You have a key by which you can organize your design to where your hierarchy will be deliberate. Okay. Right? Okay. So, looking through this, tell me about the hierarchy. Okay, uh, number one. It's that title. That title, though. That title, though. Yeah. What's your number two? Well, um, I think the logo has so much contrast right now. Like, everything else is uh, very blended, very very similar. The, the logo is, um, we talked about texture earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The logo has a very different texture than everything else in that it's mostly vertical, right. where everything else is very, very horizontal. Right. So it does bring a lot of attention to it, but this is a good thing. And we talked a little bit about, before we had a question, on the difference between application design and marketing design. Yeah. Uh, usually in application design, you want to kind of make the branding second. You want to make the use first. Whereas in marketing design, the idea is to tell people about your brand, make them familiar with it and comfortable with it, mm. and then get them to do something. So making a logo for a marketing page that's a little bit more higher in the hierarchy can be a very good thing. Right. Whereas the Facebook app that we looked at, that we did the blur test on, the squint test, yeah. it didn't have a logo at all. Yeah, <laughs> that's right? right, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So I would say number, number one for me is this big, heavy, um, irregularity in terms of okay. texture logo. Okay. It's it's really nice looking, but I'm saying all these things are different about it to make it stand out, okay. which elevates it in the hierarchy stack. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, and then the you know the headline and the and the background image right there just make this they give me a place to understand what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. This is a location. It has meaning in the in and I'm reading the text. It's historic. You know, it's giving me. Um, uh, context for the whole page and I'm seeing the image it's very regal it's very it looks okay. historic okay yeah yeah and going down the page I can see that these, these elements belong to this I might make these uh, numbers smaller looking at this again doing my squint test right now <laughs> yeah I would make those numbers a little bit smaller <laughs> you've got like a was this a, a hover element or yeah, a hover state hover state I may add more of like a, a hint or, or a call to action that like, hey, this is actionable, other than it just popping up. Oh, like click on it and like it'll like full screen or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we didn't even get this part. I was gonna make these like coming up on June June twenty fourth. Look at that picture of Jack Black. He's so adorable. <laughs> and we were gonna do an email sign. There's like a lot we didn't get to. So this is yeah. this will be fun. Um, yeah, I think that's it for, for this design. We're at three minutes to go. I want to say a special thank you to everybody who showed up in the comments, who supports uh, Los and I and all we do both here and uh, on our podcast and in our different like ways that we try to interact with everyone. It means a lot to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day. Can you add some wow factor to it? It's a common. No. <laughs> it's a common. Uh, no wow factor. <laughs> common like stakeholder feedback. Can you make it more cool? <laughs> <Be> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. It's a picture of Jack Black. <laughs> there you go. Add some wow. Add some wow. More, can you add more Jack Black? That's what you're, can you're you actually. Can add more Jack Black? <laughs> uh, yeah. Keep on hacking, everyone. Yes, keep on hacking. That was really good. Oh, yeah, so tune in tomorrow, same time, at 1 o'clock here on twitch.tv slash Adobe. Slash Adobe. And Los will be here um, working with... Kelly Griggs, a uh, senior UX designer uh, on my team at Atlassian. Mm -hmm. uh, what we work on are, is the website of uh, one of the biggest enterprise softwares. Yeah, very successful company. And uh, you're going to be talking about UX and going into the user experience and re user research? Uh, user research and, and more of just like the UX thinking that goes behind improving a, a successful feature in a known app that everyone uses. Right. So if you guys think about um, think about 
a carpenter, right? They have their tools. They have a saw, they have a hammer, they have a nail. But it you need to have the tools and understand how to use them before you put them into practice and learn the nuances on how to make a truly beautiful piece of carpentry, right? So today what we've done is we've looked at the tools and hopefully we've given you a foundation on which uh, Lois and his other guests for the rest of two days are going to build a, a really strong house of UX education on. That's right. All right. Thanks, everyone, and keep on hacking. We'll see you next time. See you.